Welcome to the COSB 360 Conversations podcast, the platform for county influencers. This is a new platform being launched by County HR's Organizational and Talent Development Division to engage with our leaders and keep our workforce informed. This is also one way that we can share the efforts of departmental staff and what it takes from a leadership perspective to keep the wheels turning in our organization. This podcast is being co-hosted by June Mighty and Dr. Leonie Mattison. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning! <laughs> well, if you are asleep, I'm 100% sure you're up now. <laughs> Marilena De Guavera, our HR director, is on our podcast with us this morning. Marilena, welcome! Yes, good morning. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> welcome. She has joined um, the mighty June, June Mighty, and yours truly, Dr. Leonie Mattison, on the uh, COSB 360 podcast. And we're so, it's such a pleasure and honor to be talking to Maria Elena de Guavera this morning. And if you don't know, as I said before, she is our HR director. And Maria Elena is actually tasked with promoting a county culture where all of our employees can do their best work so our communities can live its best life. Marilena, welcome to the program. Welcome, my my boss. Oh, my! <laughs> so I have to be nice. She's my boss. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Good morning, ladies. It's good to be here uh, with all of you, and I love your background there, Leone. Beautiful, yeah. Lake Pachuma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could be. <laughs> that it is. Yeah. <laughs> See. All right, so I'm going to turn it over to June, and she will kick this session off uh, with our questions. So June, the mic is yours. All right. Thank you. Well, Maria Lena, again, thanks for joining us. Um, we've been actually looking forward to this, and, and I've been looking forward to this. And, I, and I'm going to just give you like a little bit of background. You know, you started with the, the organization, the county organization, and you have um, led us through a variety of uh, transitions in HR, right? Yes. But now, even in the midst of that, we are, I see we have a guest joining us. One moment. Um, so right now, in the midst of, you know, moving through that, we then uh, encountered COVID, right? And so this is not, and you know, you joined the organization, we're in a um, multi-year transformation process, you have an organization that you yourself or, you know, have in terms of focusing on developing people inwardly, you know, knowing that when, when, when they have the right internal mindset that they can do great things. They can do great and then you have the COVID environment as well. So with that being said, that's the, that's the background. With that being said, tell me or give me at least three challenges that you have encountered as uh, an executive in this organization in navigating this transformation, uh, the transformation within your department, the transformation within the county. Now, all that is transpiring within the midst of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. So those of you who know me have heard me say, you can't give what you ain't got, right? And right. so my charge was to create a responsive uh, human, county Human Resources Department to serve our, our internal customers, our departments and their staff. Hard to do that and to meet that uh, expectation when my staff itself internally did not feel uh, that, they're, um, um, that they were filled and, or, or that they had a vision of that same expectation. It was that the alignment was not there. And so my first year was really focused on inward, that we had to build ourselves up so that we can then respond to our county needs. And so for the whole first year, it really was about that. And it was the tangible and the intangible, right? The, the facility, um, whatever came out, what was our brand? What was our, our mission? And we actually created the mission that uh, Leone uh, started off with, we did that together. And so 
the challenges at that point, of course, were slightly different because it was coming from the inside out. We were creating this change. What is presented to us today is something that has come from the outside. Right. And imposed itself on our community, our world, our community, and in, in, in our organization, because we're no different than any other organization. And we're all going through this transformation. So when I think about some of the challenges um, that are consistent with any kind of change really is um, the communication. Communicate, communicate, communicate. And, um, and when you don't think you've done enough or you think you've done enough, you got to keep communicating. And so that's always a challenge. And, and it's, um, you know, internal communication is compromised in any crisis and keeping everyone on the same page is um, a difficult task. And what I, I know to be true is that when there isn't information, then um, the unknown becomes something that's scary and it can impact our employees' well being and morale. So, um, if, like for last year, when I was going, we were going through our transformation, we were all here. So that makes communication easier. Uh, you can see people, you could um, feel the pulse. And um, so it just, it helps, right? Because you're together. But in the current crisis, communication routes have been significantly compromised. And so that adds to the challenge. So, and, and the, the, the fears are real and um, we see the news, we, we see the numbers in our own local area. So it, it is, a, so fear is also included uh, there. Um, associated with that is the employee engagement component, right? Again, if we're all together, it's easier for me as a leader to develop my team. Um, and so right now, when we're supposed to be social distancing and many of us are still working uh, remotely, that togetherness is challenged, right? And we spend a lot of time at work and if with our colleagues and we miss life milestones together and that again impacts our sense of engagement um, the very people that we could connect with to air out our, our feelings and our emotions about what's happening are, no, are not really available to us as before. And so it creates um, engagement challenges, I, th I think. Uh, so the, the, the last piece, as I think you said, three challenges mm -hmm. is I have seen some amazing things that this county workforce um, has been able to do in the last several months to respond to the crisis. Um, and it's this, all change is difficult, I understand that, but I think that this particular crisis um, continues to be tough emotional work. And yet I also see how despite that, our employees are working really hard to be responsive to how the community is feeling. And so the question that kind of weighs heavy on my mind is how can we help our employees sustain this, right? Sustain the adaptability and the agility mm -hmm. that, we've been, that we've demonstrated thus far. Um, so th those are some challenges. So let me do a follow-up to that because you, you said uh, two things that I want to follow up with in this discussion, you talk about um, alignment, which is, I, I think when we first did this um, retreat or advancement, we, we did have that activity, right? You know, we had to come up with the word and we all, you know, designed yes. the things and you talked about that. And, and I think alignment is, is important. And then you also talk about the, the ability to be, um, maintain this level of adaptability and how do you see, if you think about alignment and, and the adaptability, do you think that they, 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 they mesh? Do you think they support each other? I mean, are both needed in order for us to be able to do what, we, what we're looking to do? I mean, what's Adaptability your, and, and agility? 
and oh. the, the ability to be aligned, properly aligned. Yeah. So th that's a good point. And I think that it is true that I, I believe that both, I mean, it's part of being resilient, right? You can adapt um, and be resilient um, to the changing environment. But in this particular crisis, as what I believe the future is going to be, is not only can we, should we be able to adapt, but how quickly can right. we pivot, right? Can we move? And so that's why the agility component is very important because um, in the last four months, this county has really changed uh, how we work. We had to. And, um, and those organizations that can continue to adapt and, and be agile will be the ones that um, will continue to thrive. I mean, I think a lot of large organizations, they'll be around, but it's a question of whether they'll be able to thrive. That is, keep their workforce engaged and that they're still innovating and still moving forward with things. And that I, I think that distinguishing factors um, among those will be in fact their ability to adapt and to be agile, which is about a speed, right? How quickly can they pivot? Can they move to respond to what's happening? And you know what? And I think you're right, Maria Elena. I think the organization had, um, has done a really good job um, being able to do that. And we, and you know what? And Leonie probably can attest to this as well that we've heard as we, as we pivoted and provided some online training sessions. Um, we're able to get feedback from individuals who are sort of in the trenches, in the departments, and talking about the ability to transition. And there are those who said, yes, you know, we didn't think we could do this, and we want to be able to continue to do this in the future. There are others who ask the question, can we? So I think, I think your point is quite valid. It's, right. it's quite valid. Now, the second question that I have for you, your term, um, the messy middle. Ah. Right. <laughs> and, I, and I like this, you know, because you talked about, you know, you frequently refer to the messy middle and describe for me, you know, as it relates to the messy middle and where we are now, because I think most of us thought that this COVID environment would have ended by now. So for me, really, this is a, this is a messy middle. Because, <laughs> you know, I think the way that you had described it, we can't really see the, the finish line. We're so far in, but we really don't know when this is going to um, end. So what are some of the demands, you know, sort of let everybody know some of the things that you shared with us when you're in that messy middle. What are some of the demands that it places on a leader, um, the, the, the challenges, and, and how do you help to just stay focused in that messy middle? Right. I think... Um... I think you're right that the reason it's called the messy middle because we're so we're too far in to go back, uh, but we can't yet see the finish line, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's the part that gets that's what we describe as the messy middle, the the bumpy, tough um, when the honeymoon is over, right? The or the initial excitement or the initial as in our case right now, it's not so much perhaps excitement, at, but the initial reaction and the response has worn off. And then it becomes this, the disillusionment, right? Mm -hmm. um, of, can I go on? Can I keep this up? And, and that's why earlier I had said, that's what weighs on my um, mind right now is how can we sustain in a productive way and not a destructive way, right? Because we can work ourselves to the to the ground, and then that that's not helpful for anyone. If in that, because we always are working hard. I think public uh, servants in general um, are are givers in that way, uh, and so we will work hard. But if I'm not taking care of the employee, if we're not responding to the basic needs that they may have around this. It, it, we're just working them hard, but we're not really gaining um, 
keeping them, sustaining them, and keeping them engaged and focused on getting to the other side. And, and so that, that's difficult, I think, for any organization is how, how to balance that. You, as an individual, um, there are, you have these demands, you're, you're concerned about the employees, right? That's, that's your main focus. So with that weighing on you and, and just other factors, you have your, your own family of friends. It, again, in this COVID environment, how, how do you sustain in this messy middle? Correct. Um, well, one of them is by just um, embracing the long game, right? Um, th this is, in my mind anyway, I'm, this is not over. I'm looking at 2021. And, um, and then how will we look in 2021? So for, first of all, I, I have to embrace the long game, that we're in it for the long haul, and um, that this messy middle will take some time. So that's the first, it's just acceptance, right? Okay. Acceptance of, of what is, um, and that it's not gonna turn over quickly, and that the impacts are gonna be far reaching. Hmm. Um, but at the same time, knowing that this challenge can bring us together, right? As they say, challenges um, don't just reveal character, but they create character. And so I've gotta be on the lookout for all those uh, new uh, faces that the crisis has given rise to, people that can pivot quickly, who are agile, and, and have how we can give them some space and um, the platform so that they can continue and, and bring others along, that perhaps the, the same um, uh, leaders or standouts that we had in pre-COVID or pre-crisis may not be the same ones that are during the crisis, right? And so true, true. how do we cultivate that? So that, that's one. Um, another challenge is um, to look for every opportunity in the now for tr trying to improve, right? And so it'd be very difficult, I think, if I don't change my mindset that I got to let go of the past. So what we had in mind is no longer valid during this current environment. So and so true. how can I look for those um, issues, those barriers now with a new set of eyes to remove them and to, which we may not have thought about before because it wasn't, you know, it wasn't a boulder at the time. It was maybe a small uh, bother, but it, in this environment, it has become a problem. And so how do we look for those with those new set of eyes, acknowledging and, uh, um, and embracing the fact that this is where we are. Oftentimes change that slows down because we have our old tools that we wanna keep using in the new situation. Mm -hmm. um, perhaps I had just implemented it. And so I'm enamored with it and, and I want to use my new tool, but the situation no longer calls for that tool. And so am I able to let go and optimize the new situation to maybe create another tool? And, and that's, that's like, the kind of stuff to look for. Yes. Well, I like to interject here. Um, you're saying so many good things and my little light bulbs over here is like, off and I'm trying to like calm down Leone. Okay, so I must say um, something that you said a couple sentences back about mindset. I think that's where you were going. The new normal or the next new normal will be different. It will look different, right? And so, and we will be different as well because we would have, some of us, I hope, would have gone through that personal transformation, right? Because you can't get to agility, you can't get to adaptability unless you have gone through that personal transformation. And I believe sitting in the in one of the leadership seats in HR, seeing us, you know, how you have navigated us, navigated the team through that personal transformation, as you started out saying, we had to go through that first. We had to sit in the seat of discomfort. We had to sit in the seat of not knowing where you were taking us, right? Yes. 
had to collaborate. So I heard you mention four C's as you were speaking, and I really want to, 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 to just not pass over on them. And you talk about communication. It's so important during a crisis. Connections. Connections. We're able to connect um, physically. We're finding new ways of forging connections because human connections is just so, it's so important. And something that I thought about this weekend too is about how HR has become the people healer. We're the ones that are, we're actually healing the hearts as, you know, our employees are going through all of these changes. And then the third one I heard was collaboration. Mm -hmm. Succeed unless there's collaboration. And the fourth is community. And you always pride yourself on, and I think that's the culture in HR is a familial community type, you know, culture where although we are apart physically, but we're so connected, you know, um, if you want to call it, uh, I, don't, I don't know if it's emotionally or I don't know what word we want to use there, but we are connected as a team. And it is so important that I, I drive that home to our listeners is that the new normal will look different. Mm -hmm. The new normal, we would enter this next new normal as a different person. So get ready for it. The right. systems, the old mindset may have worked well in this, this, this current environment, but I really want to um, encourage our listeners, please, if you have not yet started that personal transformation, now is the time to do so. And as you said, some new leaders will emerge from yes. this, right? Yes. Yes. And so yes. as leaders, as organizations, we need to be preparing for what that looks like as well. Right. Yeah. So first, let me just say music to my ears <laughs> uh, that you would describe our department that way. I think that um, one of the things that helped us as a department is that we had been going through, so to your point, right? We had been going, I think that that's kind of my thing is like change is here and, and we have to not get comfortable, but rather get challenged, right? And in that challenge, new muscles grow and um, we become more resilient. And so I think that that's what my staff has at this time given the last year is all the change at the, you know, at the micro level and at the macro level that we were going through, right? Up to and including our, our facility, what we look like, the building, the structure. So everything inside the building changed. And so, and it continued, it never stopped. It isn't like we said we've arrived, right? It's like, okay, now that we've, we've gotten this far, now we turn our attentions to this next transformation or next shift. And we've continued to do that. And so it, it sort of, we hit a bump, right? Because we're like, whoa, what happened? Um, again, like I said, it came from the outside. And so whenever it comes that way, there's a moment of just stopping and just saying, what's happening? And then we are like, oh, okay, it's just another shift. And um, so, you know, if, if some of the listeners are wondering, okay, well, what are some of those things to keep us together to have that community? Um, and I'm still learning, right? I mean, I thought I, I miss my staff because we didn't have that connection. And so I said, I'm going to start calling every single one of them. And so I did that and I learned a lot and I asked the question, uh, what can I continue to do or stop doing or help in this situation? And they said, keep this up. And they enjoy the fact that I call them um, individually. And so I'm on my second round now of calling everyone. And now I'm asking, so I, I do know that the questioning has helped too, you know, because as we talk about, the, I, I'm in this for the long haul. I know it's not going to be over now. I'm already looking for 2021. So my questions to my staff are along those lines, right? Uh, what are the three hopes that you have for the new fiscal year? So I'm helping them look at if any of them were slipping and thinking, oh, once it's going to go away, just my questioning them with is look ahead, right? Look mm -hmm. forward and, and, and hopeful because that's what I said. What are your three hopes? And so that's looking forward. 
uh, but part of the adaptability is also, is not just having that pie in the sky kind of uh, mentality, but, but part, optimism is part of that, right? Of that resiliency is having the optimism that there is gonna be a future and the future can be bright. And these are my hopes for that. But I also ask, what are the challenges? So what might be those boulders? Because then the third question is, and how can I help you? I can't remove everything for you, but how can I help you, June or Leone, remove some of those boulders, right? How, how can I help you do that? That's my job is to assist, but I can't do it all. Part of it is my staff has to take ownership because I want to see their, their leadership. I want to see them, you know, war, like I said, the leaders that we had, and I, I believe that leaders are found throughout the whole organization. This is just not a position um, authority. And so my job is to help. How can I help you move those uh, boulders um, so that you could really have breakthroughs, right? And whatever your hopes are or whatever. And I'm excited about that. And I hope that they then feel, oh, there, there's a future. And, and that I think does help build community. And then it translates to our, our customers because my employees are feeling strong, happy future, despite what's happening right now, there's a hopeful future. And so they will respond to our customers with that mindset. And, and that meets our mission. Now, Maria Elena, you've said a lot there. And I know that Lily <laughs> is chomping at the bit and I wanna turn it over to her because I know she has questions. See that big smile on her face? That means she has something to say. <laughs> so <clears throat> before I do that though, I wanna revisit something that you said. You talked about being able to see things differently. And that's, that's, there's, a, there's a key to that, right? What was that again? You, you talked about being able to see things differently. Yes. To see differently. And as one who's, you know, have my glasses on right now and I, and I, and I, I need, I, I totally understand sometimes when my, I may be thinking I'm having a hard time, right? So I'm, I'm on the computer and I'm working. I'm like, my gosh, I'm having a hard time seeing you. You're taking the glasses on and off and you probably have done this yourself. Yeah. And what happens is that your glasses are dirty. <laughs> you got all these smudges on it, right? So, and you got to clean it. So what are some of the things, before we transition to Leone, in terms of really looking forward, and when you talk about hopes, and when you talk about obstacles, what are some of the things, if you could give us one or two things that we could do to clean our glasses, to clean our vision, so that we can look to the future, what, what would that be? And I don't mean to put you on the spot by this. You know. Well, I mean, to me, I think um, ask questions, get curious about what's happening. You know, when you can get curious about why can't I see this? Um, it's good to ask others because they'll see your blind spots, you know? And so asking questions, get, get curious. Those are the things that I can think of or the, the what ifs, what, right? What if we did this? What if it didn't have to be this way? That's why I love new employees <laughs> because <laughs> um, they have those new sets of eyes. And that's one of the things uh, that when I get an, an opportunity to, to talk to the new uh, cohort of employees is to say, question everything. Do not take every, you know, we should have good reasons for why we do. And if you ask and we don't, ah, maybe there's a possibility that that could be streamlined, that that step can be removed and we could be more efficient and more responsive. And so that, that's, it, that's why I said it's hard to, that's one of the challenges, right, in a crisis is how can we remove our own glasses? Because right. it, we may be missing something that's right in front of us. And so that's why, as Leone said, collaboration, because you, you've got to have a group of people so that you can say, what am I missing, right? That's, that's what I ask my individual employees. What can I do? What can I stop doing or start doing? You tell me. And that yeah. helps because I can't, I, I can't see everything. Uh, right. I don't have the answers to everything and it's going to take the village to, to make it happen. So 
but, but staying open, right? This is what I say to my daughters when they're, go, you know, usually was when they were traveling somewhere to study abroad or something um, or going into a new environment, I'd say, keep your eyes, ears, and heart open, right? Because you can't go in with an ass assumption of how it ought to be. Mm -hmm. We have to stay open. Mm -hmm. And if we can stay open, and I can ask, because I am in a leadership position, I have to ask others, how am I doing? Or what am I missing? What should I do here? What do you think uh, we ought to do here? You know, what's your experience? Is asking so that we can get a better, a third alternative, right? Between right. mine and theirs, there, some other third thing could come up that would never, ever, ever um, uh, materialize if I didn't ask that question. And it just helps to just sort of broaden our perspective and, and the angle and gives us more views. Uh, thank you, Marie Lena, for yeah. uh, And I'm, I'm just going to add that part of all of that is um, that's one of the, uh, the focuses that we had was around um, creating a feedback culture, mm -hmm. right? Right. That, that it's not just a top down giving feedback, but it is feedback about around it's th this way right and um employees should ask questions as managers should also so it's a feedback culture where it's okay to say what why are we doing that um and then we could say i don't know what do you got and maybe we'll get to some other better oh. alternative awesome thank you so much for 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 sharing that i think that that's the one takeaway for me is uh this morning is really um, the eyes, you know, just refocusing, making sure I constantly uh, clean my glasses, yes. so to speak, yes. so I can, you know, see, see, see much better. With that, I'm going to transition over to Leone because she is going to take us towards the future. Take it away, Leone. All right. So, Maria Elena, I love to share um, our story. We met, what, two, three years ago. And um, as part of your leadership in HR, you had us as leaders, you took us out on a little retreat. And I never forgot the first exercise that you engaged us in was this visualization. And you ask a question and the question, and I've done this with my team as well. You're a fly on the wall and you're buzzing around the county a year from now. Remember that question? What are people saying? What are they doing? Remember that? I remember because we, we closed our eyes and we were just visualizing what the future would look like. And something you said that I jotted down, you said that there will be leaders who will emerge out of this crisis, a crisis like this. And I would add to that to say, these are the types of leaders we need in our organization, to organ our organizations to be leading our communities, our, our cities, our state and our country forward, right? And so my first question to you, so thank you for one, thank you for um, engaging us in that exercise because I remember my part of that process for me was happy employees, satisfied employees, People are involved in, in, in transformative type activities. And uh, I, I heard our community members just feeling so proud of the county. Uh, they're happy that there's transparency. They're, 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 they're happy with our customer service. I, that was what I saw in my vision. I saw employees who want to come to work. They can't wait to get to work. I saw that, right? And so my question to you, what support do employees need during and after this outbreak? That's a good question. I think, I mean, one, we could say all the, the, the things in which we are doing, of course, I mean, the focus right now for me, because this crisis, what makes it unique, aside from it being a global crisis, is that it affects us all, and not just at the workplace, and not just at the home front. It in fact 
has blurred all those lines. And that's very unique, right? That the decisions made impact the home front in, in, uh, at, to such a degree that, that we haven't seen that before. I mean, if it were a, an earthquake or something like that, it's a crisis. And yes, and homes are, or if it's a fire as we've experienced, homes are lost and families are impacted. But this, but it's individuals, we hope, right? Mm -hmm. But this particular crisis is really, it is, um, it has gotten into our, the fabric of our society. Mm -hmm. And um, that is what makes it very challenging. So yes, we have to support our employees from that well-being point of view, and, and we are offering um, several things. And in fact, I just uh, spent some time with uh, Katie creating that list because sometimes we forget that we just are doing that we forget to take stock of what you know what mountains have we already climbed, mm -hmm. and and that that has built resiliency. And so we made a list of the um, all the different things that we've been able to offer our employees for their well-being and that of their families, right? Mental health support and, and those kinds of things. Um, Teledoc so they don't have to go in. You know, we have our own on-site clinic that offers that for our employees and, and uh, several more. So we're taking care of our employees in that way too. But I think that um, what, we, what I think employees also need is what I just call authentic leadership, right? that because we are in this together, it's really important for our employees um, to see us also be in it and, and that we're impacted, right? That we're concerned for our families um, uh, and we're trying to make decisions and, and this is new. It's, I have a, my, one of my daughters is, is pregnant and she'll be having her baby in a couple of months during COVID. And, and that's challenging in and of itself. But what I remind her, because she's you know, anxious about being a new parent, I say, you know, they don't come with instructions. So <laughs> it's, it's like, not, you're not, you're not gonna not follow the instructions. They, they don't, babies don't come with instructions. Kind of like what we're going through. They have, there are no instructions for what we're going through. We're building the path yeah. as- But it doesn't going. stop us from having babies. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah, if she had asked before, nine months ago, you know, but, but she's asking now. Um, so yeah, so the thing for me is that they just want um, us to share and, and to show that we're, we're having the same experiences that they are. And again, there have been no instructions, so we're figuring it out. But I think that one of the things I want to make sure to say is that our role as leaders is not just the compassion aspect of, of this, but that it is our responsibility to, that despite everything and despite the fact that we don't have the instructions on what's next, we do have our values and our purpose, right? Our mission, we have that. And, and those become our lanterns. Mm -hmm. And that despite the path being dark, perhaps at this time, that those two lanterns will guide us and we will get through this. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think, because I, I know that our employees don't expect us to, to have it all figured out because we, we cannot. Mm -hmm. um, but again, we have to keep those lanterns up because mm -hmm. you know some are going through more difficult challenges than others and they we can't lose sight of our purpose here so, so, Marilyn, oh, no, let me jump in one second because she, she made a really good point here when she talk about when you talk about the lanterns and you talk about um darkness the thing about it is um I've heard Oprah Winfrey say it, and I've heard other friends of mine say this. You take the next best step. And with the lantern, you can only see, you have light. It's just that. It's not the California's love sun. It's not the bright California sun. Yes. Yeah. It's like a North Star. Right. <laughs> you know, 
<laughs> so um, it's kind of the next best step. Correct. So that's kind of what I'm hearing you say. That those yes. languages give us the next best step. Right. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I didn't say, um, you know, um, laser lights, right? <laughs> lanterns. That's, that's what we're down to with the lanterns. It's just, what, just a, a few steps ahead. Exactly. Uh, absolutely. And, and, um, and therefore, and therefore, I think this is where we can give each other grace because we're working with the tools we got, right? And mm -hmm. right now we've just got the lanterns and we're doing the best we can. And I, th I think that, um, you know, sometimes it's hard for our community uh, members um, because we are government and, and they turn to us. Um, but I, I think people do understand that we are doing the best we can uh, with what we've got. And I think that we have been able to at least thus far demonstrate that we are following our values and, and know that our, what our purpose here is, which is why our employees, our workforce uh, continues to work so hard in the midst of all this chaos, as scary as it can be for some, um, our, everything is still getting done. The streets are still getting uh, fixed out there. Um, you know, fires are still being responded to. Our public health, a shout out to them, the whole department that is just at the front line of this. And, you know, I, I'm so proud of all that, that because we, they're all carrying the lanterns for the community, right? Mm -hmm. and, um, and that's all we have right now until we get the flashlights and, and the laser beams <laughs> and all that. Right. So, so with that being said, and that's, that's uh, I mean, an uh, excellent response um, to my question. So I'm gonna summarize what I heard. What I heard you say is that for us during this crisis, one, leaders need to, S, I call it the four S's is what I jotted down. S is to show up as authentic leaders, right? It's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay to not have all the answers, but we want to see our leaders there with us, right? Standing beside us, guiding the way. And the second S is to share, share what we're going through, share experiences, because that's how collaboration, right? right. Uh, is uprise. So that's the share. And then the third, which I love, is to shine our values, shine who we are, what we stand for, shine them, because it's so critical that mm -hmm. you know, our new employees coming into the organization know what we're about. They understand where we're going, even though we're using the lantern, but we know where we're going, right? Right. Then the fourth is to see, to see that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. And, you know, as June was saying, sometimes you got to take that glasses off and kind of look and be like, okay, all right, let me put it back on. And sometimes I don't clean mine, but whatever. <laughs> sometimes she doesn't even use it. I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> Grace, Julie, just give me some grace. No, she's like, <laughs> I'm like, right. <laughs> and also the S, the, the C is to see, see that um, we're each doing the best that we can with what we have. And that is where grace comes in, where we extend grace to each other, right? Yes. I know that, you know what? I may slip today, but guess what? People don't care what you know until they know that you care. Right. So even if I slip and slide, pick me up and let's keep going towards where the, the lantern is being pointed, right? Let's keep moving each other forward together. Yes. And that is what I heard you say. say what, my question was, what support do employees need during and after this break? These S's. These S's, these four S's, show up leaders, show up. Employees, show up. We both sides need to show up. It's like a marriage, and I don't really <laughs> do that. But it's like a marriage, and, you know, in order for the marriage to work, we, should, we both need to be yes. present. I'm going to repeat myself, and the second is to share. Let's share what we're going through so we can learn together. The third is that we shine our lanterns, our county values, our, our mission, our vision, shine them. That's what's gonna point us towards that vision, right? The values, the mission, the transformative behaviors will help us to get to that vision. Yes. And the fourth is to see, see that each other, that we're doing, actually not only see that we're doing good, Maria Elena and June, but look out for each other. I'm yes. always 
to go there. See, see about, see about one another, check in with one another, you know, text message, a phone call, an email, sing me a song, I don't care, but just check in with one another to see how we're each doing. And we've seen that in HR. I've experienced that in HR and I'm so grateful. So I think that's where I'm going to drop the mic. Uh, I, I thank you. So uh, you know, <laughs> and actually, that's a good spot because I'm not going to have to pivot shortly to go into another, um, to start another Zoom meeting. <laughs> yes, so good. For, for our Innovate SDC. Um, so, which is, which is going um, really, really well. So we have so many things, Maria Elena, that is, is occurring in this, um, in, this, in this whole transformation process. Right? Yes. Good things. Yes. Yeah, you know, um, crisis also presents opportunities. Opportunities, can, absolutely. You know, the challenges that people are experiencing, but it also presents new opportunities for, for different things. Absolutely. Opportunity for thriving. Yes. Yeah. Well, so I, I want to thank you both, uh, June, for your, as always, very provocative questions. And then, uh, Leone, for you, for taking what I put out and repackaging and summarizing it in to such a fabulous way. I'm like, did I really say that? But uh, <laughs> for your, your talents, uh, both of you, and for making this happen, this is one of the things I'm very proud of is having this opportunity to have you have a 360 podcast with other uh, county leaders as well. Um, it gives us an opportunity to, to share our thinking and thoughts for whatever it's worth for others that may be listening. So Thank you for that and keep doing the good work. You too. Uh, thank, thank you, Maria Elena. Thanks for coming. And thanks for the support. And uh, we'll see you soon. Yes, take care. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>
All right. Um, All thanks right. for thanks for a great show, June. So good All right. Likewise. See you Thank soon. You. Bye bye. Thanks for listening to the COSB 360 Conversation Podcast, the platform for county influencers. We welcome your thoughts and feedback. So if you have any questions for today's guest, or if you have any recommendation for future topics and guests, please contact our co-host. We consider all county employees to be influencers. So if you're working on an initiative or a program that has a positive impact in our county, please contact us with your idea.